Uh, well, hello, anybody who's into the old 8-bit retro stuff might have a little bit of an interest in this, so I figured I'd record it. Uh, I've just spent the last, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes doing the up, an upgrade to um, the MSD SD2 Super Drive for the Commodore 8-bit uh, 64 and 128. Uh, this drive, for those of you that are familiar with it, um, and those of you who aren't, for example, uh, this thing was a tank. Uh, metal housing could take a beating, was a great drive. Uh, its most notable feature, obviously, was that it was a dual drive, uh, I mean, which means it had two discs drives within the same case. Uh, and to my knowledge, it was the only one ever built and released, at least um, to, that I'm aware of, that was compatible with the 8-bit um, serial uh, interfaces for the Commodore 64, 128, plus 4, uh, etc., even the Big 20, to be honest with you. The, I know the PET machines uh, did have some dual drives released to them, but this is the only one that was ever manufactured to my knowledge. I know I, I read online that Commodore did prototype some 1572s, which would be the, the double-sided drive they released with the one, Commodore 128. Uh, I've never seen one in the wild. I've never seen a prototype. I've, I, think there's, I think there might be a picture or two floating around online, but that was never, to my knowledge, ever released, because uh, if it had been, I probably would have gotten one way back then. Um, but anyway, getting back to this drive, this drive is effectively a 1541 clone um, with two drives in the case. Uh, the other nice thing about it is that this is compatible with the IEEE. It does have the IEEE interfaces, so it could be used with uh, the, the PET machines, if you happen to have one of those, as well. Uh, my experience with this drive was um, I was the 8-bit librarian way back when uh, for the Pittsburgh Common Group. And so as the 8-bit librarian, I did a lot of duplication of the public domain discs. And even some of the commercial discs that we sold, we were a reseller for the right stuff and a few other players that distributed their software via users groups back in the day. Um, so I spent a lot of time with this drive. And because it was a dual drive, it was great for making duplications. The, the, ins the upgrade I've installed today was a ROM upgrade that allows the chips to, I'm sorry, the disk to be duplicated without even needing to worry about running software on the machine. So you didn't even have to have this hooked up to a, a 64 or 128. You just, with these ROMs, you just put the disks in, turn the machine on, and it knew it was supposed to copy the drives and would automatically do so. Uh, it had two copy modes, I believe, um, of one without validation and one with validation. The without validation was about a 15 second copy and the one with validation was about a 22 second copy. So anyone familiar with the old 1541s and even the burst mode 1571s uh, that you could burst with the 128, anyone can tell you that that, that's, that was pretty impressive um, and a lot faster uh, than the stock drives could do just about anything. Uh, I know there were other upgrades for copying disks using the 71 that included adding RAM boards and other things into, I'm sorry, into the 41s, adding RAM boards, and there probably were 71 versions as well. But this uh, this ROM upgrade and RAM upgrade, you actually add some RAM to the drive and you put in the two chips. There's the U6, U5 and U6 slots. You're gonna replace those ROMs with the chip level design mass duplicator ROMs. The, the, the installation is pretty straightforward and I'll go through what I did. I didn't film myself doing it because I thought that might be a little too boring for some people. Um, I do have some stills that I took that I'll post uh, on Facebook or wherever. But uh, anyway, let's go to the drive itself. The drive itself, as you can see, um, is a dual um, drive. If I can get it in the picture here. This, I don't have the case on it right now because I've just finished the drive. But as you can see, there are two drives, A0 and a disk 0 and a disk 1. So for duplicating, the copy commands that all of your 1541s and 1571s still had in the ROMs do work. They're mimicked. Um, the 71s and the 80, the, I'm sorry, the 71s and the 41s, and probably the 81s too, although I never tried it, did have the copy command in the ROM, but since there was only one drive, they really didn't do anything. Um, so you could try to execute it, but I don't, I, I don't think you're going to get any results. Anyway, this machine, because it does have two, two disk drives, as you can see, um, was a great for duplicating and also other things, but that was probably this room. I'm gonna to try to keep this in focus here um, so you can kind of see what I did. This is the internals of the machine. As you can see, two, two floppy drives, power supply, serial. Here's the, um, if I'm in shot here, 
here is the IEEE connector. So you could use it with the PET CBMs. I'm probably upside down now, sorry, let's try that again. So here's the triple IEEE over here. Power uh, fused, so you can rapidly change your fuse or blew it. And there's serials in not the standard eight, but there's two of them here. Getting into the nuts of what the upgrade was, there's a couple of things that you did. You can see the yellow, those are the two new ROM chips I replaced. The other thing that comes with it is this RAM upgrade. This is actually some RAM being added to the drive. And as you know, even in the 1541s, um, you know, they came with very limited RAM, but they did have a 6502 processor, so they could address up to 64K. Um, but they didn't ship like that. There were some various upgrades that put in. But anyway, this is a RAM chip. We're gonna put that in there. This was already a socketed board, so I didn't have to worry about some of the other things. The upgrade I purchased did have the socket in as well because you could get one of these with the bare board. There may not be a socket there. This particular board, I don't know if it was originally that way. It was a later model. It was that where someone along the line had added that socket, but the RAM just popped right into the socket, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, I removed these two ROM chips and replaced them with the, the uh, mass duplicator ROMs. So that's really the extent of the upgrade of what we change. Now to really kind of show you the action, and uh, I know you'll be in awe, but I will do this um, with the 15 second uh, validate, and it's kind of boring to watch, but unless you survive many, many years of formatting in on a 1541 without any kind of fast loader or Jiffy DOS or anything else, um, you'll appreciate this the most because you, you, you spent many, many hours of your life probably dealing with this kind of issue, even copying, even like Cracker Jack and Fast Hacking, which were great tools, never could kind of meet this guy because you were always relying on uh, the computer to have to have the program running and at least to get the, the, the stuff started by a command to the computer. This, because of the ROMs and all the hard work itself contained, I really don't have to do anything. In fact, I'm gonna actually physically unplug the serial cable so people don't accuse me of like faking or anything else. But you're gonna see right here. This is the serial cable. Um, if I've got the ca in, in camera, that's the serial cable. I'm gonna completely remove the serial cable from the drive. So now there's nothing but the power supply. No tricks. Yes, the lady, the lady is really floating, folks. Um, no tricks, no thing. So the the interesting thing about this drive. The way this works, there's a lot of, it came with a disk that had a lot of commands that took advantage of this extra ROM and other things as well. And there are commands you can actually send to the drive by a printing to the command channel as well. But I'm not really going to go into those. I just want to show you this particular feature um, because I think it's, for me, it was the best part of this. Um, but anyway, what you need to have happen is when you power on the drive, you need to make sure that the right protect uh, LED light sensor is blocked. So you would either have your source disk, uh, have the have the notch covered up in your source disk, or simply have the disk kind of pulled out of the drive um, whenever you booted the drive. And that would send the drive into, uh, let it know that it was in copy mode and it needed to do copying. And so I'll try my best to try to get this all on camera um, and, and show you what I'm doing. So I have the disk, as you can see, I have a disk partially out of drive zero. I don't know how well you can tell it's up to there's drive zero. And there's the floppy sticking out of drive zero so that the the notch down here, if you can get that in the crane, see the right protect notch is out. So this is actually blocking the right protect thing. So when I turn this on, we're gonna see a lot of lights flash. And what you're gonna see uh, is that the green lights are gonna flash, and I believe the red light will stay the red light for drive one will actually stay uh, solid when I do this. Okay, so now the green light is flashing, as you can see. That's telling you that it knows that it needs to copy. It's in copy mode. Um, and the drive one light is red as well. So I'm gonna place a disc into drive one and let it know and slide this into drive zero and close it. Now what this is gonna do, it's gonna, you see it's starting to copy. Now this disc in drive one does not need to be formatted or anything. It's just a brand new fresh disc that you would get out of your, your, your case and stick in there. And we'll let it go in about 15 seconds roughly later it's done so now I have completely copied without validation a dry drive and you can see the, the the ROM saying hey I'm ready for another one I could actually put another disk in to I could take this disk out put another one in it would duplicate again so that's the that's the non validation mode as you can see that's about 15 seconds not bad not bad at all so now we're gonna do the other mode which is I want to copy it but I also want to validate and this is the same general principle but what it's gonna do is do an actual I'm not just gonna read data and I'm going to write data, I'm going to actually validate the data I wrote is correct. So it's a little 
a little more time consuming, but it's a whopping 22 seconds instead of 15. And I know in the age of digital and, you know, SD cards and everything like that seems absurd, but back in the day when we were doing this kind of stuff, you know, well, I forget what the, what the actual format time, just formatting a disc was back on the 1541 was what, 40 some, 50 some seconds? I can't even remember. It was, but I know it was a lot. You know, that chunk, chunk, chunk that just took forever. So anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna put it in the other mode now, telling it, hey, we want to copy, but we also want to validate. So I'm gonna turn it off. The way you do this is, I'm gonna turn off the drive so we prove it's off. And this is kind of the same principle, but the, to put it in, I want validation as well, you block the, the sensor on both the drives. So you have basically I have the source disk here blocking its, uh, you know, white protect, and I have the destination disk both ready to block the, the protect. So when I do this, it'll boot. It'll kind of do the same things with the lights, okay? And it recognizes now that it's going to copy with validation. And if you want to watch the clock, you will see this one will take a little bit longer. So, and there you have it, folks. It did the exact same thing. It copied the disk, but this time it validated the data as well. Um, so it wasn't just a blind. I'm going to read and write, and hopefully it all works. Uh, and if it would fail, the lights would flash, and you'd have a warning. And if I took that disk out of drive, drive one, I could place a brand new disk in, this, in there, and it would do the same thing, just like the other one. You can copy multiple times. So when you're doing the job like I was, um, which was copying a lot of disks every month at the for the meetings and at the meetings for people who wanted various public domain discs because there was a pretty good substantial library that Pittsburgh Comic Group had. I wish I still had it, honestly. I've slowly acquired lots of discs um, through various purchases and, and things as I started to recollect 8-bit equipment. Um, but none of it compares to the library that, that we had back then, um, obviously, because it's just hodgepodge of, of people's collections that, that, have, that I've bought stuff from or they've given stuff from me. Um, I'm sure that the Pittsburgh Commodore Group's library is probably floating around out there somewhere in somebody's garage or basement. Um, wouldn't surprise me um, to find out it's still floating around somewhere, but uh, I don't know where it is, and I, most of the people that were involved in that group, I haven't seen any of them in a long, long time. Um, but anyway, there you go. Uh, I will try to show you the, I'll put the case on, I turned turn it off because I don't shock myself, but I'm going to put the cover on it and uh, just show you what it looks like. Not going to screw it on, but just give you an idea of what the drive actually looks like. Um, in typical user mode versus kind of half a part because I'm doing this upgrade. So, so that roughly is what the drive would look like um, fully assembled and working as you can see. It's a tank. It, it is a workhorse. It is a tank. It's a beast. Um, and if you can find one at a reasonable price, and you, they're really kind of superfluous these days because who's really using floppies um, at all? But little piece of history, and I know there's still a few of them out there. Most of Money Bear completely ridiculously overpriced. I got this one at, at you know I paid I paid an okay price for it, but um, not nearly what I see them generally being asked for on eBay because I wasn't going to pay that much for one because I knew the neatness of it and the functionality of it I knew very well, but the practicality of, of those functions, very limited in this day and age where, you know, not too many people are even using floppies too much anymore. Um, 